Oh my goodness, guys, we are still in quarantine in Pennsylvania. It's absolutely lovely. Still not going outside. Uh, all essential businesses are closed. It's just nuts. So we haven't left the house in a while, you know. But anyway, so we are there. We are to evolution now. Uh, I know you guys probably studied evolution starting at a young age. Uh, I'm going to teach you some things maybe you didn't hear about from your other teachers about evolution, more about the history of Darwin and everything like that. And I find it really interesting just how everything unfolded, uh, especially how it's still going on today, uh, all the controversies behind evolution and the other opinion of creationism. So anyway, so just, let's just get into evolution. Um, so this whole section is going to be on the history of uh, evolutionary thought. We're not going to go over the whole section today. I'm just going to break it apart into a small piece. So, okay. So you guys know evolution all started with uh, Charles Darwin. Now, Charles Darwin, just to talk about his history a little bit, uh, he actually had a dad who was a physician. He was a medical physician. And they were really, really, the whole family was really into the church. Every Sunday they went to church. So... As he was uh, growing up, he had religion kind of instilled in his brain from his father. Well, when it came time for Darwin to go to school, uh, Darwin actually was pretty much told by his dad, this was in the 1800s, um, probably the early 1800s. So he was told, okay, you're gonna go to school and you're gonna go be a physician. So that's what Darwin did. Uh, he went to school in Edinburgh uh, over across the pond, but he um, went to go become a physician. He got real into like dissecting animals and things like that. But he also um, had to watch like surgeries and stuff like that. And he really got grossed out because, I mean, it was in the 1800s, guys. There wasn't any like anesthesia or the anesthesiologist didn't like knock you out. Pretty much, you know, you had to lose a leg here, bite on this piece of leather and uh, we'll take that leg off for you. So. He got really grossed out and he went home and told his dad, I, I really don't think I can do this. So his dad said, all right, well, his dad had to come up with an alternative solution. So, well, all they knew was medicine and the church. So he said to Darwin, he goes, okay, you're going to go be a priest. And that's what Darwin did. Darwin studied theology to become a priest. And um, the priest had to take a bunch of classes back then. They not only had to take religious classes, but they also had to take classes on the sciences, like botany, study of plants, and zoology, study of animals. Well, the uh, botany teacher noticed that Darwin was like really, really, really into the sciences, more than anyone else um, studying theology. So he promoted him, or I should say recommended him, to go on this journey. And if you guys have ever heard of the ship, I know you guys have heard about it, uh, the, the Beagle, was a ship that Darwin sailed to the Galapagos Islands. And what the goal of the Beagle was, guys, was actually to just, as you can see in the picture there, we have uh, North America and South America. The goal of the Beagle was just to map the coastline of South America. And that was it. And in turn, with, with uh, traveling, that's how Darwin was able to get to the Galapagos Islands, which is off the coast of South America. So... In his uh, traveling to the Galapagos, he stayed there for a while, and he studied everything. I know you guys always hear about the finches that Darwin studied, all the birds with the different beaks. Well, he studied so much more than that. He studied the turtles, in other words, the Galapagos tortoises, which those tortoises are only in the Galapagos Islands. They're nowhere uh, else on Earth. They're very native, kind of like the Komodo dragons are uh, native to the Komodo Island off the coast of Indonesia. So it's the same concept there. You're only gonna find Komodo dragons in that area. You're only gonna find Galapagos tortoises um, on the Galapagos Islands. He also studied all the plants of the Galapagos Islands, just, just tons of things. But he noticed that on all these different islands of the Galapagos, the animals were very, very, very similar, but they had just slightly different traits. And he just mapped all this down. He had books and books and books and, and all these different diagrams that he made uh, mapping all these animals, all these plants out and everything. So there is the Galapagos tortoise, guys. Uh, the Pittsburgh Zoo actually got a few of these in a few years ago, and you can see them there. They're gigantic, okay? When I say, like, gigantic, I, I mean, if you're, um, you know, buy one, it will come up, like, to half of your body. You know, they're, they're huge. 
All right. Um, he was convinced that organisms changed over time. He wanted to know why. Now, you guys might be like, okay, you know, there's Darwin at a young age. Um, all right, so he came up with evolution. No, Darwin actually did not come up with the theory of evolution. And actually, in his um, book that we'll talk about later, he actually never even mentions that evolution. He talks about it very differently. So evolution is development of new types of organisms from pre-existing types of organisms over time. Okay, so real complex definition. In other words, what that's saying is we are changing over time. All right, all these organisms are changing their characteristics, their adaptations. Adaptations are just things that help an organism survive. Let's go with this, okay? Pretend that we are very primitive organisms, okay? And we live in the, I don't know, Arctic or something like that, all right? So if we we're living in the Arctic, who would survive more? People who are completely covered in body hair or people who have no body hair? Well, obviously that hair is going to help the organism stay warm, so the people with hair would survive longer, they might not survive completely, but they would survive longer than the people who did not have hair because um, that would keep them warm. So the hair would be an adaptation that is actually beneficial to that organism and that shapes evolution, okay? All right, so during the 18th century, during Darwin's time, okay, people believed that actually the earth was only a few thousand years old and the species, we were here, we were, we were chilling the whole time because they believed a lot in theology, guys. They believed that, okay, God created all of the organisms and all these organisms were around from the beginning of time and they never changed. So during this time, a lot of people were actually mentioning evolution, but no one had a means to support it. Darwin was the first person who said that, okay, yeah, evolution does exist and I have evidence to prove it. Everyone else before Darwin just didn't have the evidence, okay? So we found later on um, that all of the rocks, um, kind of, I guess, in the world, everywhere, uh, we get layers of strata. If you ever look at the Grand Canyon, uh, you could see all the different layers of strata in it. And each one of those layers of strata represents a period of time. You guys can see all the colors in the picture, all right? Any lower level of strata was formed first, and they're going to be the oldest layers, okay? So the lower you go, the older you go. I think that makes sense, right? As we go up, the rock is newer and newer and newer. It's like a cake, guys. If you look at that one, the purple one would be the oldest layer, and the red pinkish color one would be the newest layer. So we could say, like, maybe the purple one is 8 million years ago, and the red one, pink one, whatever you want to call it, might be 1 million years ago, All right? So George Cuvier, he was actually before Darwin, okay? So he actually died in 1832, and Darwin didn't set sail till 1835. So Darwin set sail three years after Cuvier already died. But what Cuvier, what he noticed was um, that he took all these fossils and bones he found in rock, and he noticed that some of them were a little bit different than others. He thought that, okay, these should be the same. If we go by, you know, the early 18th century theories that we were always the same, we never changed. Um, this would lead us to believe that, okay, if we have one bone of, I don't know, whatever organism it might be, and find the bone of that same organism, the same bone, they should look relatively the same. Well, he was noticing there was some, some differences as he went down into deeper levels of strata, okay? And this was another thing that started to uh, help Darwin shape his theory of natural selection and evolution. So here is layers of strata, guys. You can see the strata is kind of to the, to the left over here, um, and all the different eras are to the, to the right. But anyway, so if we look here at the, we'll just go with the uh, Mesozoic area, era. Um, if we look at these, these bones here, if we were to go a little bit lower, okay, to the, you know, we'll say the Triassic era, um, these bones down here in the Triassic era, okay, if we compared them to bones in the Jurassic, some things are gonna be same, the same with them. Um, the DNA is not gonna be 100% the same, 
but a lot of the nucleotide sequences are going to be the same. So if we find strata uh, and we find bones that are directly below it in that same area, the nucleotide sequences are going to be relatively uh, the same. If we were to compare, let's say, our T-Rex here all the way you know, up here, um, it, it, the DNA is going to be a very, very different, okay? But if we get closer together in the strata underneath, the DNA sequences, the nucleotide sequences will be relatively um, similar. So this right here, okay? Now, Darwin never, ever, ever, ever said that humans came from monkeys, okay? Now, I told you guys earlier that Darwin actually was, he became a priest. He, he, he graduated and was a priest. Um, but what happened was when he published his book, The Origin of Species, people really didn't like the fact that he was pretty much saying, okay, the earth is very old. Um, the different species actually change over time. So what the uh, church did was they published a bunch of articles saying that Darwin said that, okay, humans came from monkeys. He never said that, okay? But here is what was going on with Darwin. So if we look at, we'll say the human here uh, and the monkeys over here, all these little intersection points right here, right here between these two monkeys, here, and lastly right here, okay? These are called transition species, all right? What these are is these are species that are no longer in existence. They're extinct, okay? Darwin said that, if you look at the, the node here, the transition species between um, humans and our monkeys, okay? There was some species that existed right here, okay? That's no longer around. And Darwin said that we share that common ancestor with monkeys. He didn't say we came from monkeys. He said we share a common ancestor with monkeys, all right? It's a lot different uh, than saying we come from monkeys, all right? If we came from monkeys, you know, if we had this monkey right here, you would have to have, I guess, this guy going, the line going over to humans, okay? So a little bit different. Okay, so... Uh, Going back to Cuvier, he also found that um, what happened when he was looking at all the strata, all right, so some species just stopped in the strata, okay? He found bones, 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 and then toward the top of the layers, okay, of rock, he found that there was no more bones. So he said that, okay, well, they must not be around anymore, or they must be extinct. Pretty easy concept, right? So that also... Um, supported his idea that the lower strata, the lower strata is going to be the oldest because as we go up, there's less bones of the same organisms, meaning they went extinct. Yeah. Um, he had an idea also for the extinctions was that this idea of catastrophism, meaning that there was some kind of catastrophe that happened and there was a large extinction, okay? And there was a bunch of them. You guys know uh, there was the ice age that caused a big extinction. There was whatever happened to the dinosaurs, all the theories there, okay? So, um, Charles Lyell, all right? Uh, and we're almost done here, guys. We gotta just go over, uh, I think, one more person after this, all right? So, he said that there was this idea of uniformitarianism. Holy heck, that's a big word, right? Um, so, what he said was that changes in the Earth's surface so whether this was on the surface or below the surface, it could be either or. We could have tectonic plates changing underneath uh, all the rock, and that would change the surface, okay? But they change the surface of Earth today and continue to change it. Perfect example, we have the Colorado River running right through the Grand Canyon there, okay? So at one time, it wasn't like this. Uh, at one time, we probably had a lot more rock but as that river starts to, to flow and continues to flow, we are going to have less and less and less rock, okay? Because it's going to erode the rock away. And that's what created that, that very big valley there, okay? Um, so going on to Lyell, guys, and here's the origin of species, all right? Um, in Darwin's origin of species book, he referred to a lot of Lyell's stuff with the um, transformation of the earth because 
the Galapagos Islands, their, their islands. So he thinks maybe at one time um, they came off of the coast of South America. All right, last guy for the day, Jean-Baptiste Lamarck. Um, still guys around the time of Darwin, okay? He believed in uh, inheritance of acquired traits. What this meant was that individuals during their lifetime could actually uh, almost want things and then their traits would change and they would be able to pass these traits on to the next generation, okay? So perfect example of this. We have our lovely giraffe here, okay? Probably about 14 feet high and he is getting leaves from the top of the tree, okay? So he's like, okay, I'm gonna eat these leaves. And I also have a video on giraffes, guys. Um, it's, it's a really cool video on how giraffes eat, so I'll post that for you guys with this one as well. But anyway, so we got this giraffe, it's eating at the top of the tree, okay? It's able to reach the, the leaves very nicely and just pluck them right off and it, it's a nice meal, okay? So in uh, Baptiste's study of fossils and stuff like that, he noticed that, okay, and sorry guys, this picture's horrible, but it's the best picture I could find. He noticed that some of the giraffes actually had smaller necks than others. So what he said was, okay, well, clearly we got small neck giraffes and we got large neck giraffes and these small necked ones really, really, really wanted those leaves on the top of the tree. Obviously they would because they, they want to eat, right? So they really, really wanted these leaves. So what they did was they tried, they tried, they were like the little engine that could, and they kept trying in order to stretch their neck upward and get these leaves. And over time, they were successful in trying to stretch their neck as far as they possibly could. They were able to finally grow their neck high and they were able to get those leaves. Okay, wow, that's, that's fantastic, right? So for us, it would be the same as, okay, I wanna go and, and reach you know, the remote control from across the room, all right? I don't wanna get up off the couch, so I'm going to stretch my arm every day and try to get that remote. And over time, my arm will actually grow to the point where <laughs> I can stretch and get that remote. That's not gonna work, okay? So in reality, guys, what was wrong with Lamarck's theory was that um, he thought that the short neck giraffes changed. In reality, Darwin actually, I guess, perfected his idea and said, no, 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 no. The long dra neck giraffes were able to eat, they were able to survive, they were able to reproduce. The short neck giraffes, well, sadly enough, they weren't able to reach the food, they weren't able to eat, and they died. And since they died, they weren't able to reproduce, and so those traits for short necks died off with them. And then the long neck giraffes, they continued to reproduce and they were able to, um, you know, eat and those traits were, were passed on. All right, guys, so that's it for today. Uh, we'll continue a little bit more on Darwin next time, uh, but that's, that's everything on Lamarck and Darwin's contrasting theories. All right, guys, have a good rest of your day.